Hey guys, it's Faye from Solar Flow and I am back with an all new video. Today's topic is a deep dive behind the veil energy read into hell. We are going to be exploring if it is in fact a real location and a real experience that one has, eternal damnation of the soul, or if it is perhaps a modern day fabrication designed to trap our souls in a low energy. All that and so much more. So if that sounds good to you, please stick around. And if not, I will catch you at another video. Now, first and foremost, before we dive in, I have three very brief but important things to go over. Number one, even though this is a so-called dark topic, if you are anticipating that it will be presented in a dark way, no. I'm offsetting the so-called darkness of this topic with lots of humor and lots of that 2% personal opinion. Second of all, you may be presented with some information that is diametrically opposed to information that may have been indoctrinated into you at a young age. So to view this content is going to involve a certain amount of open-mindedness and mental flexibility. However, if you are one that, uh, if you are one such person that might be very dogmatic when being presented with alternative information that may be presented in this video, and you are an advocate for the existence of hell, I invite you to explore why that may be. Like, why would anybody argue in favor of hell? That's for you if you are an advocate of it to work out on your own. Now, lastly, even though I had um, another video planned for today, I had received in the last week two separate and distinct requests to look into hell. That's a sign that this is the information that is meant to be shared today. So I'm sharing it. And with that in mind, let's dive in. Now, first and foremost, not that I think anybody doesn't know what hell is said to be, but I thought in a case like this, it might be rather fun or certainly entertaining to explore what is the three-dimensional mm, explanation of the way in which hell is presented to us. So that to that end, I had actually consulted with three separate and distinct sites to bring forth the fullness of the 3D way in which hell is presented. We're going to first start with that. It'll be fun, I promise. So what is hell? Well, according to Britannica.com, it is, in many religions, the abode, usually beneath earth, of the unredeemed dead spirits of the damned. In its archaic sense, the term hell refers to the underworld, a deep pit or distinct land of shadows where the dead are gathered. I don't know. I don't know if you're like me. When I was reading this, I was like, no girl, no. This is not the hell that I was taught about when I was growing up. No, 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 no. This almost makes hell sound like it's an extended staycation in Emoville where one may go when wanting to hang out with other like-minded people so they can write some dark, emo poetry doesn't fully encapsulate the fullness of the indoctrination one may have received of the eternal damnation of the soul. So I had to go dig, I had to, I had to dig deeper. The next site that I had gone to, gone to for a 3D representation of hell is none other than Wikipedia the motherfucking source of 3D information. 
Let's see what Wikipedia wanted to share with me. According to Wikipedia, hell is where immediately after death, the souls of those who die in a state of mortal sin descend into hell where they suffer the punishments of hell, which is eternal fire. Also, the chief punishment of hell is the eternal separation from God. So if you go to hell, God is not your homeboy. Forget his name, forget his number, you will be exposed to eternal fire. I was like, we're getting warmer. This is getting darker. I think we can go a little darker. <sighs> and if you go looking for darkness on the internet, you will be sure to find it, just as I did. However, it may be in unexpected places just as I found it in a very unexpected location. So I had actually discovered somebody is selling a poster and it is a, it's a, it's a scene out of hell. It's flame and fire. And then on the poster that somebody is selling for $20, I, I still haven't been able to work out why they're selling it. Like, are, do they want it? Like, are, are, is this like a business buying it for their employees because they want to like, I don't know, like get the employees to work well because they're thinking if they don't, if they're not productive enough, they're going to, they're going to go to hell. Or is this just more like educational indoctrination that schools are buying this to hang up in the walls to like scare the bejesus out of the kids. Like if you don't listen to the teachers, you're gonna go to hell. I haven't been able to work that part out yet, but I went looking for the darkness and I found it with this poster sold for $20. And what do they say hell is? This is the full Monty guys, we found it. That according to the Bible, the Bible describes hell as a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. Haven't been able to piece out whose teeth because if you're just a soul without a body, it's not your teeth you're gnashing, but whatever. Shh, don't ask questions. Everlasting punishment. Outer darkness, eternal fire, eternal torment with no rest day or night, no Sabbath for you, no. You only have Sabbath if you're on this side and if you're an observant Jew. Otherwise, no, no Sabbath for you. Not when you cross over and you go straight to hell. You don't get a day off from your eternal damnation, no. It's also a bottomless pit. A lake that burns with fire and brimstone too. It's a worm that does not die. Guys, I, this, I read this and I was like, no, 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 no. I'm tapping out. That's a hard no for me. No hell for me. Mm -mm. Not after all of the parasite cleanses that I have done. This just sounds like a massive parasite infestation. I am not down with it. Mm -mm. I read that and I was like, that's my hard no. That is my limit. My safe word is worms. It is worms that do not die. And fire that is not quenched. Black darkness, where wickedness dwells, people cry for mercy and destruction. That is hell, according to the $20 poster that somebody is selling online. So I had read that, I concluded that, and I said, no mas. I think from those three sources, I was able to weave together a comprehensive fabric in our understanding of what hell is. There's gnashing teeth of who we don't know. There's worms that do not die. 
There is no, no rest day from your eternal damnation. There are flames, eternal flames. And it's an extended emo staycation. Let's see the goods that the guides had brought. And let's see if the channeled information lines up in any way, shape or form with the 3D information. Here we go. Is hell real? Channeled information now. Is hell real? No. Now, I'm going to caution you. Do not pause this video here because context is key. So don't pause this video here and be like, according to Faye, there is no hell. This gives me carte blanche to go out and be my biggest potential asshole that I could be because I'm not going to hell anyway. No, y'all, no. Context is in fact key. So if you wanna get to the, the end of the story here, you read the first line in the story. Do you know how it's gonna end? No, do you want to? You want to, stay with me. Don't pause the video and go be an asshole right now. So again, is hell real? <laughs> no, not unless one wants it to be. And before we ask why one would want it to be, there are plenty of the self-flagulating types that seek out a negative experience or choose a negative emotion as a confirmation bias to match the way in which, there goes a crystal, to match the way in which they view themselves or they view the world or they view their place in the world. But here's the thing, seeking out a confirmation bias aside, the agent Smiths that want to argue in favor of hell. Here's the thing, God does not seek to punish us and does not seek to hurt us, nor does God seek to see us suffer. Because God loves us as we are all God's children. And the last thing God wants is for us to suffer after concluding a long life that already most likely included suffering. Because there are no free rides in this life. More on that a little bit later on ahead. And while there are many that do hold this view of eternal damnation of the soul and the burning forevermore to burn our sins off of us, this view matches their internal beliefs as stated above is a confirmation bias of the way they see themselves or the way they see the world, or the way they see their place in the world. Or it's a reflection of their education, their upbringing, or another way of saying education is their indoctrination. And this is in fact further evidence of how religion has been corrupted to keep us down. It's all religions. It's not just my religion. It's not just your religion. It's not just their religion. It's every religion. They've all been corrupted. And if you want to uh, learn more about that, I have linked a video down below that I have previously done on religion and the cabal. You can learn there so much more about how all religions have been corrupted. So, Religious indoctrination and the introduction of a concept of a place called hell is evidence of how religions have been corrupted to keep us down. Now you may be wondering, but Faye, it says in such and such place that there is a hell and this is what happens in that hell. Okay, that may be the case, 
But guys, all religions have been corrupted. All religious texts have been corrupted, either through the adding of information that was not actually in fact there, or the intentional withholding of information. That's also corruption. It's corruption by elimination, intentional denial of adding um, key information, and anything that is a religious text that was received by man See the points up above. There are the self-flagulating types that seek out negative experiences or choose negative emotions as a confirmation bias to match the way in which they view themselves or the world or they view their place in the world. So any religious texts that pass through the hands of man <laughs> was either intentionally corrupted or was unintentionally corrupted by the self-flagulating type that was sharing information through the lens of which they themselves saw the world. So you may then be wondering, where did, why hell? Where did this concept of hell even come from? If it's not an actual physical location, or it's not an actual experience that one endures forevermore. Where did hell come from? Okay, I gotcha. The concept of hell is meant to curb our desires against sin. And to, if you will, keep us in line. However, here's the thing about hell. It does little to, in fact, deter those that have already sinned because what's the point? So it's akin to the way in which, in which one may feel about cheating when on a diet. They already had one cookie or one biscuit or one piece of cake or one piece of chocolate, or one chocolate bar, or one slice of pizza, or one whatever. So since the day is shot, their diet for the day is shot anyway, they may as well go to town and just eat whatever the fuck they want to. So the same may in fact be said for so-called sinners. So they're already going to hell, so now who cares what more they do? Because here is the thing. If we're told YOLO, YOLO, you only live once. If somebody feels like the choices they've made have comprised one too many sins and there's no coming back from them, they may as well just continue to go to town and be as bad as they want to be. Okay, so clearly the concept of hell is not going to dissuade those types of people against committing further sins, right? So then does this idea of hell dissuade the not yet sinners from committing sins? Let's explore. In fact, the idea of hell was shown to me as doing little to dissuade <clears throat> others the not yet sinners from their course, except for providing fear. Fear of the sins that one has not yet committed. But this is also what we know about fear. Fear is one of the lowest vibrations here on earth, the lowest and the densest and the darkest. So, living in fear may in fact actually trap someone in their current state as fear acts as a kind of sticky glue. <clears throat> so if one perhaps wanted to trap and if it wasn't just one individual, but let's say that one had a bunch of other people that were working for it. And let's say 
we might identify the group of people that are working for that individual as a cabal. So if one or the organization we call the cabal wanted to perhaps trap people and prevent them from ascending, a concept such as hell would be a great way to do it. And here, now, let's also stop and kind of like reflect on what, what earns somebody the one-way ticket to eternal damnation. Sins, right? Let's talk a little bit more about sins. Sins are nothing more than choices made when we are out of alignment. I will repeat that. Sins, sins in quotation marks, for those of you that are listening and not viewing, sins in quotation marks, are nothing more than choices made when we are out of alignment. And part of the reason that souls choose to come here, believe it or not, it's not to go to hell thereafter. Because part of the reasons that souls choose to come here is to have the fullness of the human experience. Because there are many other places and locations in the universe where our souls are not being squashed or compressed into human bodies where they are not living in an environment that is akin to quicksand. It is not where there are choices that create karma, which necessitate coming back and working through it in subsequent lifetimes. And oh, hey, yeah, while you're here, you're also having your memory wiped in between so you forget why you're here in the first place and why you have to come back and what karmic shit are you then making amends for. And this is all while being seduced by the 3D telling us what kind of car we need to drive, what kind of house we need to buy, assuming you can even afford to buy a house, and what kind of clothes we need to wear, all while being mind controlled and indoctrinated away from free thinking for ourselves. Because if we ever did actually think for ourselves, we'd stop feeding the matrix. So here's the question. So does surviving all of that, does that actually sound like a reason for a soul to be punished? once they cross out of their body? Does it really? Does it to you? Because choices, whether they are made in alignment or out of alignment, and then thus considered to be a so-called sin, The choices that we make are all free will. And free will is not just part of the human experience meant for us to be experienced when we are on this side and when we're alive, but free will reigns supreme even on the other side. And I got more on that coming up ahead. And here's the thing about free will, when we're still alive and when we're on this side. Free will kind of acts, if you will, in the way in which those books that you can curate the ending of the book, depending on the choices that you make while you're reading the book, like choice A, proceed to page 100. Choice B, proceed to page 72. It's, it's that kind of a book, right? 
So our free will acts, if you will, as the choices that one would make when they are reading a book that you can curate the ending and the experiences that the character has in the book, depending on the choices that you make. So an oversimplification. So-called good choices would lead to a favorable ending in the create your own ending book. Another oversimplification, so-called bad choices would lead to a not so favorable ending of the book. So let's now apply that not to a curate your own ending kind of a book, but this is more akin to create your own kind of a life here on the earth plane. Because if our choices here on the earth plane, when simply made out of alignment, led to a not so favorable outcome, <laughs> wouldn't that be punishment enough? Especially <laughs> when knowing that our choices have created negative karmic shit for us to now work through. And how do we work through the negative karmic shit that we've created through choices that were made? <laughs> By coming back again into another incarnation. So isn't us coming back again to do it all over again and to right the wrongs that we've created as many times as it takes until we make different choices? <laughs> isn't that also punishment enough? Is a negative reinforcement really needed? And this kind of got me thinking about reincarnation and eternal damnation. Because I don't really see how one connects to the other one. And here's why. Does the concept of hell take into account reincarnation? No. I remind you what was said. There are no days off. There is no rest day or night. It is a bottomless pit. It is where the spirits of the dam coalesce. It's eternal burning. It's eternal flame meant to purify our souls. It's the worm that does not die. It's the fire that cannot be extinguished. It's where we cry out for mercy and destruction that does not come because it's an eternal damnation of the soul. So how does an eternal damnation of the soul line up with the concept of reincarnation? Because this whole burn in hell forever thing does not actually support the advancement of our souls and our soul's ability to come back and to right the so-called wrongs in our subsequent incarnations. So are we burning in hell forevermore after our lifetime when we cross out of our body? And if so, how do we get to reincarnate back again and right our wrongs? We don't. Okay, so then is it that after we've concluded our, all of our reincarnation loops in which we're cashing in and we're collecting on the benefits and the blessings of our previous incarnations, and we are righting all of the so-called wrongs, and we're working through all of the karmic shit, and we are finishing out all of the soul lessons we agreed to experience, and where we are concluding all of the soul contracts 
So is that when we're going to burn in eternal damnation? Because if we've already done all of that and we've already righted all of our so-called wrongs, why then do we actually have to go back to eternal damnation at all? We've already righted all of our wrongs. You see how they're not congruent. They don't coincide. They don't mesh. Because if we recognize and acknowledge reincarnation and our souls are coming back anyway, then why do we go to a hell to be burned forevermore? We don't, because there is no hell. There's only reincarnation that gives us the opportunity to come back and right the wrongs. So, if there is, in fact, no hell, as a either physical location or as an experience that one is meant to endure forevermore. What actually in fact happens to us when we cross out of our body? First and foremost, what was shown to me is that our souls are escorted by our guardian angels across to the other side. Once there, we may be met by other loved ones that have previously crossed over before us. There is also a bazaar, kind of like a cosmic flea market, if you will, with different vendors. However, these vendors are not sending, selling you kitschy things. Their vendors or locations on the other side where we can explore all sorts of different things. And I'm gonna give you a very, very brief explanation of what has previously been shown to me. However, I'm also going to share with you guys that if you want to deep dive into this a little bit more, I'm also linking down below a previous video that I had done on the afterlife as well as related topics. So this is for you if you have not yet seen it or you want a refresher, you want to deep dive a little bit more into the afterlife, it is linked down below. Because I'm going to talk about it a little bit here, but it's not the full breadth and scope of what I had shared in that video. So when we cross over and we are at this cosmic bazaar with different vendors that are not selling us things, but they're giving our soul different opportunities to explore things, what are those things that we get to explore? Well, first and foremost, there is a vendor, if you will, where one can see their life play out like it's a movie. But this is without the human emotions attached to it. There's also a booth where one can understand their soul contracts, their soul lessons, and why they chose to experience them in this last most recent lifetime. There is also a booth where one can see and spend time reunited with loved ones. There's also a booth where they can learn all the mysteries of the universe, everything they've ever wanted to know. There is a booth for soul healing and there is God and ample time and opportunity just to be with God. But again, all of this that our soul experiences at the cosmic flea market this is all experienced without the human emotions that we have while we are still alive. Because all the human emotions, except for one, they die with our body. The only emotion that remains is love. But it's not just the experience where the soul itself feels the love for all of the other souls that are around them. It is directed at them as well, where our souls feel the love directed wholly and completely at us as well. So for all the mamas out there, if you could take a moment and recall the way we felt when we first met our babies, that overwhelming sense of nothing 
but pure unadulterated love, we are experiencing that in our own right. Looking out at the other souls that are on the other side, but we also feel that being directed at us by the other souls as well and directed at us from God as well. So, to be in that experience of nothing but pure love, both divine and otherwise, so to leave that, to come back into another incarnation, again, to right our so-called wrongs, is in fact the ultimate punishment in quotations and the experience of leaving God and leaving that love to come back is the most akin to hell. So to choose, because free will reigns supreme. How much time do you want to dive into the mysteries of the universe? How much time do you want to spend looking into all of your souls and soul contracts? The amount of time you spend at any of those, you know, vendors, the amount of time we spend kicking it with God, that's entirely up to us. The choice is always ours when we choose to come back into our next incarnation. But making that choice to leave God and to leave all of that love, that's actually most akin to hell. To leave that love and to come back and to forget that we are divine because we have a piece of God inside of us. So what we're not actually being told is that by agreeing to come back and to leave God, that's actually hell. And what we're in fact being told instead of that is that when we cross over, we are not reunited with God. And instead, we go to a location called hell where our souls burn forevermore. Do you see how even the concept of hell has been perverted? Because there is no hell to go to. There is no burning of our souls forevermore to burn the impurities off of ourself. The true hell is knowing once we've been reunited with God and feeling all of that love, leaving that to come back into another incarnation, that is actually, in fact, hell. To come back and to be veiled and to do the whole dog and pony show all over again. You may then be wondering, why do we do it, Faye? Why do we do it? Because in the cosmic creation of our soul's eternal wisdom, there are experiences that we want to have. And if we didn't have them in one incarnation, once we're on the other side and our soul has been healed, it's not so bad any longer. We'll say, okay, I agree to go back again. I got this one more soul contract that I have to conclude with somebody, and then I don't have to ever see them again in other subsequent lifetime. I'm gonna do it. I'm going to do it. So even though it is an experience that is most akin to hell, it's also a choice that is made when our soul is actually, in fact, the most highly aligned. Because we're reunited with the highest version of ourself, the version of ourself that sees everything and knows everything and not the limited view and scope that we have when we are on this side. So it's akin to hell, but is it actually really in fact hell? It's just us making decisions when we're most highly aligned. But interestingly enough, this whole idea, we are in fact reunited with God 
and we're surrounded by nothing but pure love from God and all of those other souls around us. And then we make the choice to separate from God and to come back and to do it all over again. <laughs> Got me thinking if maybe that's why babies cry when they're born. Because now they're back in their body being compressed and squashed and they're veiled and they're separated from God and they're like, what the fuck did I actually agree to? Because again, we make the most highly aligned choices for ourselves, especially when we're cosmically creating all the experiences that we have in our incarnations. We actually make them when we're on the other side. And it's not to say we can't make good ones when we're here. We can. I'm getting to that and in a hurry. So what is in fact being told to us is that we die and we go to hell and we're separated from God because that again, it keeps us frozen in a low vibration. So now that we know there is no hell, not as a location and not as an experience. Do not, as I had said at the beginning of the video, context is key. Do not take that to mean that we have carte blanche to do what we want and to be, do bad deeds. No, because first of all, free will. So while we all have free will, as I had shared earlier on, our choices create the experiences that we have here on earth. And they do that by changing our vibration. So just like I had shared in the create your own book ending, the bad choices beget further bad choices and the good choices beget further good choices. And that's how you would end up with a so-called bad ending to the book or a good ending to the book. Here's how. So the so-called bad, oversimplification and in quotations, the so-called bad choices that we make lower our vibration. And then once our vibration has been lowered, that then lines us up with low vibe people, places, and experiences. And then once we are in that vibe exercising our free will, our choices are limited to other low vibe, low vibe options. But again, oversimplification, the so-called good choices raise our vibration, which in turn will line us up with other high vibe people, places, and experiences. And then once we are in that own vibration, our free will provides us the opportunity to continue to make other high vibe choices because we really are the cosmic creators, creators of our reality. And I also remind you that our big soul lessons, that's not the choices we make on a day-to-day -day basis. That's not, I woke up this morning, I put on a green shirt. I woke up this morning, I decided to do a video on hell. Those are the day-to-day, -day, the big, really notable big soul lessons that we experience in any incarnation that can feel like they're altering the tra trajectory or path of our life. Those were already pre-approved by us and for us to experience in this lifetime prior to us even being born. So whatever happens after that is all up to us. So if we have a really, really big soul lesson that again, we agree to experience in this lifetime, we got, a, we got a biggie. So how long thereafter we spend feeling sorry for ourselves, licking our wounds and complaining to anyone who will listen about it are all choices that we make. And we can also say that the longer we spend doing so, doing all of those things, is its own kind of a hell. 
So hell can be lived on earth and it is not restricted to the afterlife. Because the choices that we make can either confirm hell and they can draw us into it. And then the choices that we make once we're in it can keep us in it. Or the choices that we make can eradicate it. Because again, free will reigns supreme. We're not trees. We don't have roots holding us to one particular location or one particular energy or one particular place in our life. If we don't like where we are, it's as simple as changing our vibration because that again will line us up with high vibe people, places, and experiences. But if we don't, if we don't make the choice to raise our vibration, if we don't make the choice to make different choices and we continue to make the choice to perhaps live in victimhood and complain or to look for the confirmation bias in the experiences that we have and look for the negative emotion. One can in fact create a hellish experience for themselves here on earth. And no, no omnipotent entity is needed for that. So we're again the cosmic creators of both the experiences we have while alive and once we have crossed over. And just like the big lessons we agreed to experience in advance, those are already pre-approved by us prior to us even being born. So we don't have to worry that we're doing wrong by anybody. That's already something our soul agreed to work out with them and they agreed to work out with us. So too, similarly, the chances of us making a truly big, life-altering so-called mistake or so-called sin, such as the unaliving of another person, is incredibly rare. Because something that big and notable is a energetic rebalancing. It's just souls coming together to work out shit in this particular lifetime. It's stuff our soul already agreed to and their soul already agreed to. So we could rebalance everything. So the chance of us making a truly, truly big mistake, so to say, or a really, really big, bad sin, those are incredibly rare. Because if they're their so-called really, really big, bad ones, they're soul contracts. But, in case there is still some lingering fear or some lingering doubt, I did some bad things. I did some sins, quote unquote. I made some choices when I was not uh, fully aligned with the highest version of myself. Maybe some of them affected other people. If you're concerned, focus on raising your vibration so that the choices you will make moving forward, will be a high vibe one. And thus those will not be choices that are made out of alignment. And thus they will not, of course, qualify as sins. It's not like I made some bad choices and now I'm just screwed so I can give the fuck in. No. Every moment along the way, we can make a different choice. And how? Just focus on raising your vibration so that the choices you make thereafter are high vibe ones and they are not then made out of alignment. But even the ones, the choices that you do make that would qualify as a sin, lighten up a little because it's not like you're going to hell anyway. So that is the reading that I have for you guys on hell. I hope that you have found this video to be interesting and insightful, maybe even thought provoking. And I remind you, whether you are an Agent Smith or not, to please take what resonates and to leave the rest behind. And as always, and until next time, I remind you to 
stay in high vibration.